Hey guys, welcome back. Hey. We are going to interview Miss Lauren today and uh, kind of find out her part of whole life vitality, um, what she does, what she cares about, what her purpose is in life, what her focus is, all the things that makes Lauren Lauren. No pressure. <laughs> uh, so Lauren, what do you do? What do I do? What do I not do? Right. Okay. What do I do professionally? We'll, we'll start there. Professionally. Um, professionally, I am a certified personal trainer and a certified nutrition coach. Wonderful. And um, that means that I help people with their bodies. Ah. I help people meet their physical goals and recognize their physical needs Mm -hmm. and um, help kind of narrow down what it is that they want based on what they're looking for. Wow. Um, when people come to you, are they often like super motivated and ready to make changes? Almost everyone that comes to me really, really wants a change. Because mm -hmm. that, that's why they sought me out. Yeah. Right. Cause they have this idea, whether it's, Oh, it's bikini season or the holidays are coming or I have a 20 year reunion or I'm getting married or, um, you know, whatever it might be, there's always something, Yeah. but there's a big difference between I wish I already had and I want to, mm. uh, no quick fixes for mm. no this, quick fixes. this journey. Unfortunately, that's not how the body works. It's not how the body works. Yeah. Uh, what led you to becoming a personal trainer and a nutritionist, actually? What, what's the story behind that? Well, um, I was the child of someone who um, struggled with their weight. Hmm. For as long as I can remember, uh, it was fad diets and... Slim fast or herbal life or um, only eating certain things or you know, cutting out whole food groups and doing all the fitness videos, right? So the fitness videos of the 80s and 90s. The Jane Fonda? You, I have done some sweat into the oldies. I have done the Jane Fonda. I just thought it was so much fun. The, my mom would get together with her group of friends and they would send all the kids outside and... I would always stay inside and do the workout video with them because I'm like, we all get to move together. This is so fun. What was the, wasn't it Buns of Steel? Buns of Steel. <laughs> yes. Uh, Suzanne Summers Thigh Master. Suzanne Summers. Yes. I owned that. I owned yes. that Thigh Master. I think every home in the 90s owned that Everybody Thigh Master. Everybody did. Mm -hmm. um, but I saw the struggle. And I saw family members struggle and I saw her, my mom's friends struggle and I was just confused mm -hmm. because I was an active child, um, very active child, sometimes annoyingly active. I believe, um, some people might've put me into that category. I like to climb trees and run and play and ride bikes and would get frustrated with my body when it couldn't keep up with my desire to continue to move. And it was super fun and I couldn't understand why I was a fit child and these women were struggling with their bodies. Yeah. So then I um, got a little older and hit puberty. So all this was pre-puberty, hit yeah, puberty and my body started to change. Yeah. And in the process of that change, I went to authority figures in my life and I said, what's happening here? And they said, well, that's just part of growing up. It got hard. That's just part of, um, cellulite. That's just because you're a woman. Yeah. Um, you have babies and you get fat. You, you grow up and you put on weight. That's just normal life. That's just yeah. how bodies work. And I thought, well, I hear you. I see that. I get that you're saying that. And that's your truth. But then I knew other women that it wasn't a problem for. And so I would ask about those other women and I would get the answer of, well, they're just lucky. Yeah, genetics, right? Just good genes. It's good genes. They're, yeah, they're just, they're just lucky. Things are just different for them. And I, I just couldn't take that as truth. I couldn't take that as um, that black and white. It didn't right. make sense. So 
then I tried some things out for myself. And I got to be a teenager and I had put on that puberty weight, which often children do. Your body yeah. changes a lot. And I put on some puberty weight, probably at that point, it was around 30, 40 pounds. It was kind of a lot, but I was going through a lot emotionally right. at the time. And um, I read some books and the book said, well, this is how you lose weight calories in versus calories out. And granted, again, this was the nineties with the really not the best advice, but the calories in versus calories out was something that I said, at least that right there kind of makes sense. Yeah. Energy in versus energy out. A calorie is a unit of energy. And so that at least kind of made sense. So I said, well, if you have to burn more calories than you consume in order to lose weight, then if I only eat a piece of bread today and I go for a mile jog today, then I will have burned off the equivalent of the bread and then I can lose some weight. Ah, uh, I, I think I know what's coming. So I said, okay, well, that makes sense. No one told me that for my body to pump the blood around or for my brain to think or for me to digest or move my muscles or breathe or do anything, then I was already using energy. Nobody yeah. said that. Yeah. Let me just preface by saying the book that I read was a book for beauty pageants. And so the advice that they gave might have been a bit extreme, yeah. but again, pretty spot on for the 90s. Yeah. And so I went from um, a, you know, looked like I was still kind of in puberty um, and kind of, kind of a little fluffy, but I was okay with, with that, um, to then losing weight and teenage bodies, they change really quickly because right. they're still growing and changing anyway. And I went from, I want to say around 150, 155 pounds kind of there on my five, four frame to 105 pounds. Wow. And I just kept losing weight and losing weight and losing weight. And it became a bit of an obsession and something I'm, dare you say an addiction? Possibly. Yes. I would say every time I got on that scale and I got a little hit of dopamine, yeah. then I was validating myself that I was a good person, that I was doing something that was right, that I wasn't falling down the trap of obesity right. that I had seen. And, um, kind of dug myself into this eating disorder. Yes. And um, it wasn't until I think that I started getting teased and made fun of for then being too thin right. that I was like, well, I mean, damned if I do and damned if I right. don't. I, <laughs> I wasn't ideal over here and now I'm not ideal over here. What, what is ideal? Right. So... I'm not lovable here and I'm not lovable there. And so am I not a lovable person? Like right. what's, what's the problem here? So I moved out, um, went off to college and was poor, poor college student. And you know, what's really cheap fast food. Yeah. And stress is plentiful and fast food is plentiful. And I quickly gained about 50 pounds. Mm. And I continued this up and down journey with the weight, still trying to figure things out. I moved out pretty young. I moved out when I was 17 and um, still so much to figure out at that age, right? So up and down and um, in the process of doing that, I came to the, some conclusions about liking myself that maybe that was a piece of the puzzle here. Right. Um, but I don't think that I fully came around to understanding all of that until I became a mom yeah. and started seeing my daughter and realizing that what I had done to my body with these extreme weights as low as 105 pounds and as high as 208 pounds having gone through these extremes that I didn't want this for her. Yes. So I started personal training when I was 18, 19, around there. And um, 
I did what I understood and I did what was taught to me and encouraged people to work out a lot and to make that a part of their lives and to modify their eating and um, maybe a little bit more than I would recommend now. Yeah, but it's a journey. We right? all learn along the way and um, that's ultimately what I've learned over the course of these last 20 years of training has given me such a solid foundation that I know when I sit down with clients now that mindset, body connection plays such a huge part in how your body works because I didn't get to a point where I was happy with me physically until I was happy with me mentally. Yes. So what I'm hearing you say is that the why behind the change is pretty important when you're when you start this physical journey. The why is huge. And I am a firm believer that if you have a big enough why, there is no such thing as an impossible how. And the why shouldn't be that I don't like myself how it is now. I don't, I don't like what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this. I'm seeing that. I don't like it. What should the why be behind a fitness journey? It's impossible to bully yourself into being healthy. Mm. It's impossible. You can't bully other people into it. You can't bully yourself into it. It just doesn't work. Right. Uh, the people who see success in weight loss by doing that are the ones that it bounces back because they will fall back into old patterns of um, self-destruction right? because they still don't like themselves. So um, for, for me, the big whys were I want to be healthy for my kids and then I want to be a good parent yeah. and I need to address the stuff that I've gone through um, mentally so that I can then be a good example for my children and respond in a healthy way when, when my children need their mom. Yeah. And then I got sick mm. and, um, getting sick was pretty profound. I dealt with pretty severe adrenal fatigue, couldn't get out of bed, couldn't function. Um, uh, that was, that was rough. It was rough. Yeah. It was a hard time and learning how to incorporate uh, foods and lifestyle as medicine, as yes. ways to heal the body instead of ways to cope with life. Yeah. <laughs> Made a huge difference. And then um, healed from that, felt pretty amazing. Um, had a couple of young kids and um, was diagnosed with cancer mm -hmm. and felt like I'd just run into a brick wall. Like, can I not catch a break? What's going on here? and took that opportunity to dive even deeper into the world of healing with foods and how does the body work and why does it work this way and why does it create cancer cells? What are those even and yeah. where do they come from and, and how do we change that? Can we change that? Right. And I was able to completely heal from that and once I healed from that couple years, then... Um, I was struggling again physically and couldn't figure out why and found out that I had Epstein-Barr virus, mm -hmm. which uh, is commonly misdiagnosed as MS or fibromyalgia or other autoimmune diseases, Crohn's disease. Um, they're all commonly misdiagnosed when they're actually Epstein-Barr. The beauty of it is, is a virus. Yeah. And so I heard virus, Epstein-Barr virus, and I'm like, well, I mean, I've gotten the flu. You can heal from a virus. I got you, this. Yeah. And at this point, I've overcome... The cancer didn't kick my butt. Right? This <laughs> virus won't. Like, I've overcome so many things. Okay, yeah, maybe it lives in your body. Maybe you're telling me you can go dormant for 20 years and then come back and be brutal on your body. But I don't believe it has to be here forever. I don't believe I have to exist in this. And so each time I use it as an opportunity for learning and for growth. And each time my, the knowledge that I gained it grew so much that I have even more to share with the clients that I work with. So you're saying hope plays a big role into healing. Huge. Then. 
Huge. So your why needs to be something that really drives you. Absolutely. Uh, okay. So with that, if I come to you and you know, you've, you've healed yourself through those things and, you know, paying attention to how you're moving your body and what you feed your body. So are you going to tell me this is good food? This is bad food. Eat this. Don't eat that as your client. What is food? Food is fuel. Food is fuel. Okay. Um, anything else? Mm, nourishment. Nourishment. Okay. Um, do you ever consume food for enjoyment? Man, birthday cake. Okay. Cookie cake. I'm a cookie cake person. Cookie cake. Man, cookie cake. You, I am a firm believer. You can't have a dang piece of cookie cake and not smile through it. I'm yeah, happy. yeah, like the chocolate chip one. Yes, yes. yes. I mean, let's be fair, the sugar cookie one is pretty good too. Oh, okay, man. yeah, but chocolate yes. chip. Mm. So, absolutely. Yes. So, food is meant to be enjoyed. Mm. If we were supposed to just fuel our bodies and nothing else, then we would all just live on manna. <laughs> That's so true. You know, it's, it's bland, <laughs> it's the same, but it gave them everything they needed to survive. Yeah. And they could survive on it. And you know what? So could we. We could all survive and function through life just living on manna. Yes. But that's not what we were given. Right. What we were given is a whole variety of things in all different shapes and colors. Yeah. And each of those things have a purpose. Each of those things have different nutrients that they contain. And so you, there should be a whole variety of things in your world that you get to consume. Mm, that you get to. Yes. I like that. So I'm not going to tell you this is off limits. Right. It's up to you to decide what do I want? And I'll tell you on a scale of one to 10 where it falls in the realm of um, really being more like medicine for your body and yes. healing for your body and where it falls into the category of um, just extra because right. even sugar is fuel. Yeah. You know, sugar is fast fuel. It's yes. instant fuel. Yes. You can use it right away very easily. And that's just regular old white granulated sugar. That's incredible. Look, that's uh, already mm -hmm. I'm like, hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> you're saying I can have, cause that's what we do, right? Yeah. When we, when we start a fitness journey, our first instinct is to say, to focus on what we can't deprivation. Do. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. I have to do, and that's, and that's our, that's how we talk. Yep. I have to do this. I yep. can't do this. And yep. so it's, it's so many negations mm -hmm. that we add towards it. And then the brain, all the brain hears is, uh, don't want to do that. Yeah. That sounds miserable. Yep. They think that this is a, like just a chore. So let's make it feel like a chore to yep. their body. Um, and so it's, it's just so incredible how just shifting that idea around food mm -hmm. can make all the difference. Yep. If you wow. take yourself out of in this moment right now and you say, I'm going to eat this cookie cake yeah. and it's going to be delicious. And what do I think Sunny's going to feel like five minutes from now or 10 minutes from now or an hour from now or a week from now. Mm -hmm. And do I, am I comfortable with that? Right. Is this really yummy feeling right now that I'm getting, you know, this, yeah. the, the dopamine and the serotonin and all the feel good hormones that I'm feeling right now with this chocolate, does that lead me to how I want to feel in an hour or a week right. or whatever? And so good. if it does, then, oh my gosh, enjoy the Eat cake. It. Right. You know, and if it doesn't, then say, you know what? I like cookie cake. And I can have it whenever I want to, because you know what? I'm a grown up, and nobody's going to tell me I can't. Right. But maybe I don't actually want that right now because I don't want to feel that way right now. Exactly. So maybe I'll choose something else today. And that makes so much sense. I, I am allergic to beef, to red mm -hmm. meat, and so it still looks good to me. Mm -hmm. I like it. I, you know, it doesn't make me sick to look at it. I'll watch my husband eat a burger and say, "Ooh," but I make the decision every time. I know how I will feel and what will happen to yes. me if I eat mm -hmm. the burger. And so I opt for the veggie burger mm -hmm. <laughs> because I know I won't feel and have the same feelings afterwards. So that's such a great 
you know, prompt to give yourself. You know, if, if you can think through it and say, no, I, I feel like I'm happy with my decision. If yeah. it's my birthday and I want to have the cookie cake, sure, then the eat cookie. the cookie cake. Absolutely. That's amazing. This yep. is gold here. <laughs> uh, so, okay. Someone thinks that they're ready to, like they've heard this, they've heard yeah. this and it's resonated with them. Yeah. What's the first step for them? You can reach out. We can chat about where you are, what you're looking for. You can find me on social media at Whole Life Vitality or Intuitive Living with Lauren. Um, and we're also available at wholelifevitality.com. And let's chat. Let's do a 30-minute call where we just kind of discuss where you are and if this is a good fit with any kind of situation like this. It's really important to have a conversation. Any trainer that you think about working with, sit down and say, do our values align? Does right. what I want align with what you offer? Is this a good fit? And I'll tell people at the beginning, if I feel like we're a good fit and it's going to work, if I feel like I can help you with what wow. you want, because maybe you come to me and you're like, I want to be a professional lifter. I might say, then I really encourage you to go to someone who specializes in that. Yes. Because that's not my specialty. That's not your specialty. But there are so, people who do that. So there is like an evaluation process Absolutely. when someone comes to you. So that's mm -hmm. great to know. Yeah. Um, and it's not a one size fits all. Our bodies are not a one size fits all. Absolutely. We are the same age and our bodies are completely different. There yep. are some aspects where we are going through the same thing. Yeah. But mm -hmm. then there are other things that are completely different. So, yeah. you know, we are all, we can't wear the same size. <laughs> so that makes a lot of sense. So yeah. they can, they can find you through those aspects and just, you know, reach out. Cause actually what you do, you can do a lot online as well, right? Yeah. I virtually train. Um, I do coaching over the phone. I can do FaceTime. I also see people in person here in Alabama. So that's awesome. So even where you are, wherever you're listening yeah. to this, you can still get the help that you need. And I do have people that I coach that don't train but they just want to come to me and, and work through some of their feelings about food. Wow. Because there's so much with that, um, dealing with an eating disorder and not just a restriction, but then a binging that yes. I've experienced both of those things and then working through the mental stuff that I needed to Absolutely. in order to come to the other side of it. That's incredible. I coach people through that well, as well. Well, yeah, because it's, it's not just that you are only a personal trainer you are a coach as well right so then their relationship around food is it's huge, huge. it's because huge here's the dirty secret here's the dirty secret that trainers won't tell you you ready for this oh man give it to us you can't lose weight with just working out oh so you're telling me <laughs> That I can't just go run off everything and and you can't. be you know, work. on the cover of Sports Illustrated, huh? Doesn't work. Ah. Yeah. You have to address what you intake, yeah. which means you have to address what goes in your head and what right. happens in your head too, because it all has to come together. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. you'll sabotage yourself every Absolutely. time. Mm -hmm. All of your efforts yep. will be sabotaged. And then you're just sweating for no reason. Yep. Right. I've had lots of people come to me and say... Every time I lose a couple pounds, I binge and I weigh more now. Yeah. And I'm like, yep. God. That, yeah, you're that right. Sounds, sounds about right. That happens. It does. <laughs> because you don't believe that you're worthy of success. Absolutely. Or you are holding on to something that is tearing you up inside and right. your extra weight that you're carrying is the protection between you and what you feel like could hurt you. And they thought they were just coming to you to get skinny. Right? Well, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have something um, for possible clients that'd like to make a change, right? We have Absolutely. Something? We have something for you. We have a 30-day mindset bingo mm -hmm. free for you at wholelifevitality.com. You can go to our freebie section and download your 30-day mindset bingo and then follow along on social media. So it says mindset, but there are actual prompts for physical health on those as well. Oh, for sure. Mindset is a huge piece of physical health as well. They're best friends. Absolutely. You cannot do one without the other. Yes. So this is mental. This is physical. This is mind, body, soul. This is everything. It's really important to address each aspect of this. And um, 
It will guide you through 30 days of getting started. If you feel like that's all you have the room for, you're looking at maybe five to 10 minutes a day maybe. for the next 30 yeah. days. It doesn't take much, but it's those little things that you do every day that build up over time to leave you headed towards the path that you want to be on. Which is what we're about. Yeah. Once you download your um, mindset bingo, then join us on uh, Whole Life Vitality, at Whole Life yes. Vitality on Instagram, and we're going to walk you through every day uh, the what's happening. Yes. Yeah. And share your journey with us. Absolutely. You know? Share how you're doing. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much, Lauren, oh for goodness, opening yes. up and being you know, so transparent yeah. with us with your story. Yeah. And yeah. listen, if you resonated with any of that, reach out. She'd love to talk to you. Absolutely. Right. Thanks so much. Bye, guys. Bye.